Hi Floss Tube. It's Annie B's. So happy to be back. It hasn't been three months. Isn't that great? <laughs> anyway, um, today is Saturday, um, October 27th. It's actually my anniversary. 34 years. My husband and I have been married. He's definitely my best friend. We met in high school, so we were just babies when we met. And we've been together, actually been together 39 years. Wow, that's crazy. I'm not old enough for that, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so welcome. Welcome to my channel. It's great to see you all here. I have so much to share with you. I always feel like I haven't gotten anything done, and then I sit down and I make a list. So if I'm looking down at my list, here it is. Make a list of everything, and yeah, I've got quite a bit to show. So first of all, a little bit of a life update. Um, since we last met here in YouTube land, um, my youngest daughter, Isabel, she's the one who was on the video with me before, she had knee surgery. She's had, um, in high school, she has torn her ACL when she was in 8th grade, and then she tore the other one when she was in 10th grade. So she's had these two um, ACL repair surgeries, and now she damaged one of her knees again. And so she went in, it was more of like an exploratory surgery because we weren't really sure what was going on. And when they went in there, the meniscus was pretty damaged. She had quite a big rip, which they were able to repair. But um, the hard thing about it is she cannot put any weight on that leg for four weeks. So that was um, like the beginning of October. She's about three weeks in from um, since she had her surgery. And she's doing very well. Her recovery is going really good. She started PT this week, and so she's doing good. But um, it's a little difficult because, you know, she's crutching around, and, you know, that's not easy. And then um, two weeks after that, my husband had knee surgery on his knee, which he damaged um, sometime at work. He's been a security officer for years, and um, a lot of times they have to run you know, and he ran on probably on concrete or something and damaged his knee. So he had surgery. And so I have had two invalids in my house. And uh, his wasn't quite as bad as Isabel's. He doesn't, he can walk on it, but he, it's pretty sore. And he's walking with a cane and everything, which is weird. Really weird. We're like not old enough for that kind of thing. But anyway, I keep saying that. Um, anyway, so it's been a little bit of a challenge. Um, you know, I'm the only one with two legs around here, so, uh, it's been a busy time and, but they're both doing really, really well. Their recoveries are going just picture perfect. And so pretty soon everything will be back to normal, I'm sure. So that's one thing that's been happening. Also, um, I'm back on the cookie wagon. I started making cookies for Halloween. Isabel helped me yesterday and we um, got them all baked and flooded and which is like when you put the base, I would say like a base coat of um, of frosting and on Monday we're going to decorate them all up. So some of them, a couple of them are done and I'll insert a picture hopefully here. And you can see what some of them look like. And then later when I get them all done, I will definitely post, you know, on Instagram is where I mostly post. But anyway, it's been really fun. And I have these old, um, these old Halloween cookie cutters that have been around since I was a kid. And I'll post a picture of the, of those too. And so they're really cute shapes that you really just can't, you don't see. Like one of them that's turning out so cute is like a witch's broom. It's really, it's so cute. And there's like a cat, a pumpkin, um, a bat. And anyway, they're really cute. So I'll post a picture of that. So that's been keeping me busy. I'm trying to get them done in time for Halloween for all my little granddaughters. Who, you know, are just the perfect age to celebrate Halloween and all that. 
Okay, so that's basically what I've been up to. And then um, also, you know, model stitching. I have two new patterns coming out this coming week. They were supposed to come out last week, but I had a glitch. You know, what I do is I, I get the pattern all ready and then I send it for a proof. And um, this time one of the proofs came back and the picture was just fuzzy and it was driving me crazy. So I had to fix that which was like kind of detective work to figure out why that was happening, but I did solve it. And so now they're being printed and they'll be going out to the to Hoffman next week, probably Monday or Tuesday, which is great. So it's exciting to have something new. So um, I'll start with finishes and I may as well just show you those because they're right here. Get that out of the way. So the first one is the highly anticipated um, sheltering tree winter everybody keeps asking me as i was doing this series are you doing a winter are you doing a fall blah 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 and you know i did i always planned to have all four of them it just you know i wanted to space out the release time so here's the pattern and i'll show you the model and it's oh gosh finished like all the other ones and uh yeah, I don't know. I put that bow on a little bit low. So here you can see what the top looks like. Get that bow out of the way. It's got the heart like all the other ones. Anyway, little foxes. So in full disclosure, um, I had a little trouble with the fabric. Um, the original, the first three were stitched on a Lakeside Linens fabric that I guess they don't make anymore. So this is like um, the original fabric, which I believe was... What was it? I think it's pearled barley. So, but now they just make vintage pearled barley. And the vintage pearled barley is a lot darker. So I had to find a fabric that looked like this. And I did, and it was the same count. And this one is um, light mocha linen. And it's still a 28 count, but guess what? It didn't come out the same size. So look at that. So this one <laughs> uh, doesn't match. Same count, different manufacturer. Isn't that crazy? I guess Lakeside Linen, you know, which is what this one is, has just a tighter weave. And so um, I don't really care because, you know, you can't tell that really. If I didn't tell you, you would never notice that on the pattern. And the pattern is mainly what I'm selling. But I just want to point out that if you are going to do the full series, make sure you buy fabric for all enough for all four. Don't do as I did and, you know, not check that ahead of time. So, you know, be smart. <laughs> Get your fabric all at once. All right, so that's that one. Um, and then my other new pattern coming out is um, a, two little ornaments. They both come in the pattern. It's called Christmas Cookies, and they're meant to look like cookies. So that's why the snowman has this little um, brown edge all around, and obviously the gingerbread man. These came out so stinking cute. I'm so happy with these. And here are the models. So here's the gingerbread man. And I just finished them in like kind of a flat fold style. But you can finish them however you like. And then here's the snowman. Isn't he cute? Do you like his little buffalo check border? So that's Christmas cookies shipping this week. Aren't they cute? So excited for these. And they're all DMC except for... Um, the the brown which is <laughs> brandied pears by classic color works but you can use whatever you like we should all do our own thing don't you think anyway so that's the new patterns and the new models for the new patterns and then i have some other fully finished objects yay okay number one winter avcs this is the um, Little House Needleworks. I showed you the finished one, I think, last time, you know, finished but not fully finished. So here's my full finish. 
try to hold it there so you can see the whole thing. Didn't that turn out super cute? So I got this like barn wood at Hobby Lobby. Came in a pack of these like slats. And then my husband cut one of the slats and glued them all together and nailed them all together on the back for me. He actually did that. Like usually I'd be like, honey, can you do this for me? And then maybe six months down the road he'll do it. But he did it right away. Anyway, so isn't that cute? And that's how I finished it. And it looks so cute. I have a skinny wall that it hangs on and it looks amazing on my skinny wall. And I did it all, it's all magnets, Priscilla-fied. So I'm gonna do all, obviously, all of the different, oh great, look what I did. <laughs> all right, come on, fix your hair. Anyway, I'm gonna do all of the different um, long skinny ones that Little House Needleworks has released. So, you know, there's an um, autumn, there's a spring, there's a summer, and I have the winter. Love it. I'm so excited by that. Okay, so that's one. Um, what else do I have? Oh, and then last time I showed you after I went to Needlework Galleria, I had gotten the pumpkins that were, so it was the craft pumpkin, and the lady there, Janice from Noteworthy Needle, drilled the holes for the design and then all you have to do is cross stitch the design so here's the white one and cut a hole in the bottom and that's how you're getting in there to do the cross stitch so here's the white one I love it and then here's the one I had started that I showed you before excuse my reach the monogram aren't they cute I love them and they went really fast I used um, black pearl cotton this is pearl number five and then on the white one I couldn't they didn't have number five at my Hobby Lobby so because I ran out so I got number eight and it looks just as good so I love it um, so that's my pumpkins um, and then you know I was working on Christmas Day or I had finished it I'm not sure if I had finished it or if I was almost finished last time but it's by Prairie Schooler and I showed you how I was gonna change it out with my autumn Prairie Schooler, which um, Autumn Leaves it was called. So anyway, I finished that and put it on the magnets. Whoops. And it's all ready to go. I actually still have the Autumn Leaves one up, obviously. But just wanted to show you that this is finished and ready to go for Christmas. Yay! So excited. I love this. It is a little bit bigger you see you got really it's a little bit bigger than the autumn one and I don't know if that's again like the maybe the count or the different fabric or whatever I don't know maybe I have to do a stitching gauge like they do with the knitting and make sure I get my sizes right or something but anyway it fits so that's fine so anyway that's good to go I'm so excited about that and what else do I have oh <laughs> Now we get into the controversial finish. Yes, controversy. Shocking. Cheryl, remember I told you this is going to be shocking. Okay, so um, I had started the um, Hawk Run Hollow Sal that Cheryl McKinney and Amy Loves Toads and I um, can't remember the other lady's name. I'm sorry, I can't think of your name. Anyway, I watch you. I know who you are. I just can't think of it. Anyway, they started this um, Hawk Run Hollow sale. And, you know, Hawk Run Hollow is, this is my oldest whip in the world. Because I started it in 2005. So here it is, my oldest whip in the world. And I was complaining last time how I didn't enjoy working on it because... It, um, I don't like the 40 count. I don't like the 40 count. It's just not fun. I don't know if it's just this particular fabric or what the deal is, but I just am not enjoying it. So guess what, guys? You see, I didn't put even one more stitch in since I talked to you about it before. So guess what? Meh. Gone. <laughs> 
yep, all that work. I'm putting it away. I'm not throwing it away because I can't really do that. Maybe I'll do like Cindy and cut it all up. I don't know. But for now, it's just going into timeout. I don't want to look at it. Don't want to think about it. But I do want to think about Houses of Hawk Run Hollow on 32 count, which is a count I'm much happier with. Now, I didn't get all of this done in a month. I started this in 2009 was the first time I put the other one in timeout and I got all the stuff to do this in DMC on 32 count and I started it and I had this this and this done and then when I decided I'm just gonna I kept like waffling between the two I know it's crazy and then this time I said that's it. I'm just working on the 32. So this month I did this entire block, which is a beautiful block. It is probably the magnum opus of this design because it took forever because you had to do all the black. Everything, the Hawk Run Hollows are densely stitched. This one block is like a hade because every single, there's no, there's no single place on here that isn't stitched and then you had to stitch the entire house and then go over it with like a back stitch giant over 4x which looks amazing doesn't it and when you talk about that and think about that you're just like that's insane I can't handle that but it was so much fun to stitch I literally could not put it down I was trying to stitch models and I just kept on picking this back up. So I stitched the whole thing in October, this whole block, which I think is going to be definitely the hardest block of this entire thing. But anyway, it's going to be huge. <laughs> so that's my shocking reveal. The other one is just, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm not stitching it. I'm not stitching it. I'm stitching this one. And I will finish this. Because now I'm really excited about it. Uh, yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> that was a finish. Not a fully finish. But a finish for October. Um, whips. Whips. Let's talk about whips. First of all, the Hawk Run Howl. And then second of all, I'm working still on Santa's Village. I really want to get this done this year. I really want to get it done. Here is my progress. That's where I am. I worked on this block this month after I finished Hawk Run Hollow. I went to this one. And the reason I went down instead of finishing going across is because I'm trying to find a frame. And so I want to know exactly how big this thing is so that I can get a frame and I already know exactly what kind of frame I want for it. So anyway, this is the one I'm almost finished. All I have left is um, that little, this thing that goes on the bottom and this is done. This has a big like reindeer button, which is nice because then you don't have to stitch all those snowflakes. So now that I get this, once I get this done and I get this bottom, little doodad and then I can tell what the length is going to be then I'll go back up and I'll stitch finish this row so that's my plan so that's my Santa's village I really really want to get it done this year because I have Main Street going too and I really want to do that but I feel like I should finish this before I work on Main Street again and I have all creatures great and small which I want to finish too but I have decided that 2019 is going to be the year of smalls for me. I, I have to quit it with these gigantic projects that I can't get done quickly. And they just, they weigh on me. I just want to work on them, but then I want a finish. So I'm going to try to work on some smaller things. So I say. Um, I also started, for some reason, on a whim, I started, um, and this will go fast, 
probably because I was thinking about doing like more smalls. So anyway, this is Lizzie Kate's spooky string. Oops. Is that cute? I have almost all the strings except for Thanksgiving and the cat and the dog one. Anyway, so here's what I, I'm just stitching it with um, things that I have, threads I have in my stash. I'm making my way across. I, sh I could finish this really fast if I just buckle down, which I, I will. Probably not before Halloween, but that's okay. And I want to finish that, like, just like the other, like the winter ABCs and the, um, the Prairie Schoolers where I can just keep, like, switching them out. You know, like, get one frame and then put the magnets and switch them out. And then, um, I also started, I ordered everything to do, um, Tis the Season because I had the book. I love everything in this book. I've always wanted to stitch this. That's one of the reasons I got this book. So when the sale came along, I wanted to join. So I got all the threads from Victorian Motto. And I love them all except for this this one. Which, it doesn't look bad on the screen, but to me it feels so bright. Like a bright orange. So I might switch that out. I don't know. But they are nice, and I really wanted to try them. Because everybody always raves about them. So... Anyway, so I have a pathetically small start on this. Like, pathetic. That's it. <laughs> That's my start. <laughs> so far, I do like the threads, they, the coverage. Okay, let's get this out of the way. The coverage is nice. They're, they feel like thicker. You know, kind of how... Um, Classic Color Works is kind of like that. It has like a thicker feel to it, and so you get a really nice coverage. Anyway, that's all I have started on that. But it is a whip, so I thought I would show it. And then, I was watching Lost in Floss. Hi, ladies! We're going to have to get together, because we don't live too far apart in, in the world of Floss Tube. Anyway, um, and... Leanne reminded me of the Prairie Schooler Santas that I said I was going to stitch them all because they started the year I was married. And, you know, and I did start them and I got two done, two or three, two, I think. And then I started this one and I just like, I don't know, I'm just having a hard time moving along with this. But after I was reminded by Leanne, I went back to it. And I realized why I don't like stitching on it is because of this fabric, which is the Davos, or however you pronounce that, that is called for. And it's like, um, it's the, it's like, it's not like linen, so it's like stitching over one. And I was having a really hard time with it because I stitch in hand and I use the sewing method and I, that's my preferred way to stitch because I can just fly. I mean, it goes, once you get in a rhythm with that kind of stitching, it goes really fast. But with this, you have to use the, you know, you have to make it like X by X, you know, complete each X as you go. And you have to use the stabbing method. You can't really do the sewing method. And so it was just going really slow and it was getting on my nerves and I didn't like the way my stitches were looking because at first I was still trying to go um, in a row, you know, like like do all the um, forward facing slash and then come back and cross them. I was doing that and it was making the stitches look terrible. And then I realized, oh, I need to do it at each, complete each X at a time. Duh, I don't know. It's because I don't do a lot of over one. But that's what you have to do when you do over one so that your stitches don't slide under. And that's how this is. And once I started doing that, it did look a lot better. So it was more like satisfying, but it's still slow going. It's slow going. This is a little needle minder from Remy or something. Remy and Co. Or I can't remember. Anyway, um, but you say I don't even have my needle in it. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> 
because when I put it away, I'm afraid I'm going to lose it. So I really only use the needle minder to hold my pattern on. That's what I use it for. I just like hold the pattern on there. Anyway, um, so I do still, I am going to stitch all of these because I want them all done. I still, you know, my original idea, I'm still into that. But what I'm going to do is after this one, I'm going to switch the fabric to some kind of linen and that way I can just crank them out fast, which is what I like to do. So that's my whip. This is um, Prairie Schooler Santa 1986. So yeah, I only did two. 1986 I'm on. Where are you, Leanne? You're doing the 90s already? <laughs> Um, okay, what other whips do I have? Um, I'm also working on um, Country Cottage. No, not Country Cottage. Country Stitchers, Deb and Liz. I'm doing the Round Robin. I signed up for the Round Robin. Um, I'm not going to show you that because it's not complete yet. But um, So that's another thing I'm working on. I'm almost done with the one I'm working on now and I'll be sending that this week and but I already have this, the next one so I'm getting a little behind getting a little bogged down with that um oh and I have one more thing I forgot to show you a fully finished object which is my October cottage isn't this cute I love it it's like falling but anyway <laughs> This is another one that is attached with magnets. I got the um, tobacco basket at Hobby Lobby for like $1.90 when they were clearancing out all of their um, spring stuff. And I did order a bunch more of the um, cottages so that I can do the, the rest of the months. I don't have November done. I don't, this is the only one I have done. So I don't know. I'll see how fast I can get them done. But isn't it cute? I love it and it looks so cute where I have it hanging by my front door yeah I love it my whole house is getting Priscilla fied yay I love it it's so cute thank you Priscilla and Chelsea for all your awesome ideas anyway almost forgot to show you that okay um plans what are my plans I plan to continue model stitching so I can get some, I've got a bunch of new designs like um, pretty much, pretty much charted and I'm, you know, hopefully, hoping to get another winter one out really soon. So I'm going on with that, um, trying to plan my releases for next year and figure out what I'm doing. I'm not going to be at Nashville Needlework Work Market this March as a vendor because I didn't, I tried to get in and I didn't get in. So I just was like, okay, I'll try again next year. And then at the last minute I got in, but I had already made other plans for 2019. And so, um, I just, I couldn't get it back together. I mean, I just didn't find out in enough time. So I am going as a designer and I'm going to scope it out just like my husband and I did for Galleria. And so I will be there, but I won't be vending until 2020, which is kind of a bummer, but you know, what are you going to do? That's just the way things go. So, um, I'm going to continue to work on Santa's village. I'm still working on my shepherd's book bush stocking for my daughter-in-law it's almost done there's only two little bands left on the bottom so I'll be getting that done real soon um, hopefully I'll get back to tis the season I'm going to continue to work on the prairie schooler Santa um, and in November I'm going to try to do the next block in Hawk Run Hollow um, and I think that's about it. Oh, I did want to talk about a little bit about. Um, I forgot to show my stash. <laughs> I had just a little tiny. I did order some of the um, the cottage of the months, but I don't. I can't find them. I put them somewhere. I have them, but I can't. I can't show them because I can't find them. But I also ordered. 
um, Farms of Hawk Run Hollow because I'm insane. I said I was going to do smalls next year, right? I'm not going to start this until I finish Hawk Run Hollow. But I ordered it because it checked all of my boxes. Everything. I love this so much. It's so cute. So Hawk Run Farm. Um, I'll tell you what I love about it. Number one, Double Yolk Wednesday. Let me get this so you can see it. Right here. These little chickens. I love that so much. Because there's seven chickens on there. One, two, three. Yeah. There's seven chickens, and that's how many chickens I have owned. I do have chickens. I have backyard chickens. And um, I got them in 2015. You see that? Oh, there. Terrible glare. Anyway, um, so we started out with four baby chicks that came through the mail, which was a riot. So I ordered them in the mail, and my son Aiden and I went to pick them up at the post office and you could hear him cheeping as soon as we walked in there and uh it was really fun i raised the first four but one turned out to be a rooster and i live in a suburb and we're not allowed to have a rooster so i had to rehome him which i did took him up to kenosha wisconsin and so he went to live on a chicken farm with a bunch of other chickens and then um so we had three over that winter and then we decided to add, yeah, we added, we wanted to add some more, so we got two more, and because I didn't want to just get one baby at a time. And so we got two more, and um, we're really only supposed to have four in the city, but nobody checks at all, so I wasn't too worried about having five. But then one of the babies didn't survive, which was really sad. Um, and so then we had four. And then um, one of them got sick and died. And so then we had three and it's just was not, you know, three isn't really enough to make enough eggs for our family. So then the next spring we got two more and those were, what were those? Um, barred rocks. So we got two barred rocks and then we had five for a while. And then um, last January, I think it was, I let them out to free range, but you know it was January so they didn't there was not enough cover there was a lot of like you know um, trees with no leaves and stuff and a, a hawk came and killed one of them it was really gross but anyway so then we were down again to four which is what we have now so all in all we've had seven chickens and that's why I love this because it has seven little chickens on it anyway that's a long tangent of a story and then I love this little um, what does it say? Grammy Jane's Apple Butter. It's so cute. And then the Saturday Dance. The Barn Dance. Give Thanks on Sunday. Perfect. Livestock Auction on Tuesday. So obviously it's days of the week. It's just so cute. Sheep Shearing Thursday. Look at that. Oh, come on. I love it. I just love this. This barn has a pig as the weather vane how cute is that anyway so i bought that and i also bought i don't know why i do this I'm, who knows if i'll ever get to this francis pool this is a um this is a reproduction by brenda gervais and i have loved this forever. I've loved this forever. It's just so beautiful. I love these little urns. I love the colors in it. I love how delicate it is. All the birds. So maybe this is a maybe someday pattern, but yeah, Francis Pool. So that's my stash up. And then um, one more thing I wanted to mention. I am going to be at the cross stitch retreat next October 2019 this is Cindy's cross stitch retreat that's going to be in Knoxville I think pretty sure it's Knoxville anyway I'm excited I'm excited to go to this it's gonna be so awesome to meet people that are going I'm really excited about other people who have said they are going isn't that cute anyway 
So that's going to be awesome. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about was organization. Um, this is my pineapple notebook. It's a cheap little notebook I got at Hobby Lobby. It has those kind of um, dot point pages. but And I use this um, to... I, I like to put... Um, when I get things kitted up, especially if it's like a, a, a big project that's going to take a while, I like to just like make sure I have written down what the count of fabric is, what the size, what threads I'm using, the date that I started, all that kind of thing. And I've been doing that for years and years. But what I've started doing differently because of Carol from Saltbox Stitcher had mentioned that she keeps track of like I don't know how she does it, but she just mentioned that she keeps track every day of what she stitched, and I really like that idea. So what I started to do was um, every night after I'm done stitching, I just write down what I worked on. I don't really work write down the how long I worked on it or anything like that, because I pretty much mostly work about the same amount of time every night, pretty much every night of the week, not always, but... Um, I usually work from about 6 or 7 after dinner until bedtime, and a lot of times I stay up late because I'm kind of a night owl. So I, I would say average 7 to 11 or midnight every night I do. And so, um, so I just started writing down like what I'm working on. And for some reason, it's really helped me have a lot of finishes. So I started this in July. And since I started, I have now, um, I think, 18 finishes. So I just write down what the date, what I'm working on. And then if I have a finish, I put a little highlight. Look at all those finishes, man. Isn't that awesome? And it's just really helpful to know, to keep me, like, focused. So that I've just, I'm not just, like, picking things up, working on a little bit, then you know, never pick it up again, I can look back and see, okay, yeah, I've worked on that so many nights, you know, so I can say, like, um, I think I had looked to see how many nights it took me to finish Hawk Run Hollow, so I started it on the first of um, the new one, so, like, now that I'm working on the big one, the new incarnation, um, I started that on October 1st, and I worked on it, let's see. Like, I think 16 nights it took me. Is that right? Yeah, 16 nights. Of work to get that done now it's not the only thing I worked on every night I usually work on two things a night so I'll put in a couple hours on one thing and then a couple hours on something else but um so yeah so like then I can see okay this is you know and that was densely densely stitched so it took me 16 nights of maybe one to two hours a night to finish that like one densely stitched hade of a block <laughs> which is what that one was. So I just, um, I feel like it makes me, it keeps me more focused. And um, I just, I don't know, I like to be able to look back and see, you know, what I've worked on and how long it's taken me and maybe can help me gauge a little bit. You know, when I look at something, can I finish this by a certain length of time? You know, it gives me a better idea of how or whether I can even do that. So anyway. That's just something I've been doing. Okay, I think that is everything. Let me look at my notes. Yeah, it looks like I've um, covered everything that I wrote down. So um, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful Halloween. Um, you know, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Annie B's Folk Art. Um, I did make it into a business account, so now it's linking to, um, I have the ability to link it to Facebook. So um, Annie B's is my page on Facebook. And then um, I have an Etsy shop, so if you're looking for anything, I will be putting the new stuff in my Etsy shop next week. 
So um, I am just starting to just put stuff in immediately because people are asking for it. And so before I was like, oh, I want to give the shops, the brick and mortar shops time to sell it. But um, there's a lot of people who don't have a brick and mortar. So I feel like it's going to get distributed. So I'm not too worried about it anymore. So I will be putting the new stuff in next week. Um, anyway, so um, if you like what you see, subscribe. Click the subscribe button. Um, thank you so much for coming to watch my channel. I can't believe I have as many subscribers as I, as I do. Um, I continue to just love Instagram. It's my eye candy. It's my inspiration. I feel like I've gotten to know so many people on Instagram and I love seeing what everybody's stitching. It just, people are amazing. There are so many like really, really amazing needle workers out there. I've really enjoyed everybody's um, videos on Midwest and all the different whistle stuff. That looks amazing. And, you know, so I've been watching, trying to keep up with floss tubes. I got a little behind with all the surgeries and everything, but I'm catching up. And um, I love to see what all of you are doing. If you have a floss tube, um, you know, let me know in the comments if you have a floss tube so that I can come and watch your floss tube. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that I haven't seen. There's a lot of floss tubes now. So, you know, just shout it out in the comments so I can come and watch. Anyhow, um... I think that's about all I have today. So hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. It should be, things should be a lot easier around here since, um, you know, my husband and my daughter are getting over their surgeries and hopefully things will be getting back to normal. Have a great Halloween and I will see you soon. Bye.